So uh, welcome guys. So we will be uh, quickly starting the first session of our Apache Solar class. Okay, so let's get started. Yeah, so a little bit on the prerequisites. So it's not a hard stand prerequisite. So it is recommended that you have a decent machine since you already join. So you should uh, own a decent machine with a decent RAM. So for running even the practicals or the labs, you don't need to have a very heavyweight uh, infrastructure. So a decent uh, two to four gigs of RAM is pretty good enough for us to run all the labs and uh, decent storage space. What software requirements we need? Since most of the packages what we will be learning through will run on top of Java, so you should be able to download and install Java the latest version of the Java. So you can find all the installation documents on how to download and install using the LMS port, uh, portal. You will find the installation documents as well. Little bit Linux or Windows basics, so it's not absolutely mandatory. If you know just the basic commands of uh, changing the folder, uh, executing a shell script, that should be more than sufficient. That's what we meant by basic uh, Linux skills. Uh, computer science, yes, you may uh, have to uh, require to understand some of the advanced terminologies or techniques at times, so that is one of the expected things. And basic understandings of databases as well, so very, very basic, because we'll be cross-referring some of those things, okay? So we will also uh, provide uh, you some of the things like uh, VirtualBox, uh, CentOS, and Tomcat. So some of these very uh, briefly, if you are aware of, that's, that's more than sufficient, okay? We'll be walking you through e on each and every lab by step-by-step -step guide, so you don't have to worry on anything like how to work on a particular technology or on a particular skill. Fine, guys? Great. So let's quickly uh, go through the courses or uh, the courses module. So we have uh, structured this course into eight modules. So the first two modules we will be focusing on Apache Lucene and exploring Lucene. And the third module will be introducing Solar and fourth module will be extensively spending all the aspects of indexing and the fifth module will be learning all the different uh, basics of solar searching and the sixth module will be diving in deep for all the extended search features or the solar features in fact. So the module 7 is a little bit more advanced. We will be understanding the more architectural details of solar cloud. What is solar cloud? Uh, how solar cloud and uh, the high scalable uh, solar search applications can be delivered using solar scale. Solar cloud will be discussed. Apart from that, uh, some of the basic administrative aspects also will be covered on module 7. So module 8 will be uh, accumulation of all the aspects what we have learned and we'll be working on a project. Okay, So that's the outline of the course what we're going to cover. So let's quickly uh, jump on to what we're going to do today uh, for this session or for this module, okay? So we will start off understanding what is search engine, what are the search engine uh, basics, how does search engine work, and then we will introduce Lucene, how does Lucene work, what are the basic components of Lucene, what is the architecture of Lucene, and explore the feature set of it. Then we'll uh, start learning some indexing and searching basics. We will also understand the different components like analyzers, query types, and we will end up by doing a small uh, demo of a Lucene APIs. We will be covering a lot of extensive uh, lab sessions in module two. Okay, so our course is designed and structured in a way that we'll be following topic and lab kind of a thing. So every 
uh, topic will be having a lab session and that way at least we have a little bit more understanding of what we discussed we immediately practice okay so it's not all theory or all jargon so every topic will be discussed and immediately after that we'll be practicing that topic or uh, that particular aspect okay fine so let's start off understanding uh, what is a search engine and why would anyone need to have a search engine and why does solar or lucene have to be used or what is the need of using something like this okay so most of you uh, might have noticed that uh, whenever you go to any uh, shopping uh, e-commerce shopping site or any enterprise applications so the first thing you would have noticed is you would have a text box right so the text box the moment you type in something so it will pop out a drop down box what we call it as an autocomplete where you will be recommended or suggested with options to select from that drop down box so once you select the drop down box then you can search or hit the search button you'll be provided with the list of results right also on the left hand side you might see all the categorization or what we call it as facetting group and you can see list of groups selected with counts as well okay and you might also see some of the things on the right hand side which may be relevant uh, recommendations or more like this or ads kind of thing coming on to your right side right since i have searched for quad core mobile so it is also making some recommendations are you looking for say lava iris x1 uh, or lenovo or hp slate kind of things okay so these are all the usual things what comes up if you have entered any search term and you are looking for your results right so exactly what happens internally is the moment you hit something the search term it has to first go and look up the similar terms or similar items in the database which can first of all form this drop down box what what we call it as autocomplete right once you get this autocomplete drop down you can select and then it goes into the back end database for now we will just define it as a database we will not differentiate whether it is a search engine or whether it is a uh, traditional rdbms kind of a thing okay so once it goes and starts looking into the items or products in each product description whatever the matches it finds it fetches all those records and returns it back okay after returning it before returning it back there has to be some post processing which has to be done for our uh, grouping aspects say we have grouped on price we have grouped on brand feel and we have grouped on operating system so let's say there has been some uh, products in our database and each product had all the price attributes or field the brand attributes or column and the operating systems or uh, column okay based on the value of those fields or on the columns it has to go and do in memory grouping and counting of each item value and then return those facet values as well in the results okay so all these things is a very interesting operation and is not easily achievable using conventional or traditional databases okay and also if you notice on the right hand side you may see similar recommendations or similar products and you would get similar uh, type of recommendations as well even this kind of processing is done in one shot and you should get all these kind of results back to your screen so not necessarily or only uh, e-commerce uh, products or e-commerce portals has to adapt 
uh, these kind of features. Nowadays, any e ERP application or CRM or any enterprise applications, they all have more or less similar needs so that they have to adapt yeah salesforce more or less every every enterprise application every huge scale application would have more or less similar requirements okay so then the first thing what we could think of is so why don't we do all these things in memory or why don't we store all these things in database and do intelligent in memory uh, processing kind of a thing. Yes, of course we can do all those things in memory. Just think of the complexity and every application doing the same thing. Instead of every application doing the same thing and storing all the structured data in the database, it is always recommended we find the right product which is already built and which can be directly adapted. Okay, that's where the Lucene and Solar comes into picture. So I have not even explained how does Solar or Lucene help better serve the content compared to traditional databases? We'll be covering all those things uh, in, in a while. Okay, fine. So I said uh, we may have to adapt a already pre-built platform or uh, technology which can suffice all our needs what we have seen in the earlier slide. So Apache, Lucene or Solar is one of those technologies which can help you deliver all the features or aspects what we were looking at the initial slide. Okay, so we said the course is all about uh, Apache Solar and we might be wondering what is this uh, Lucene is all about. So Lucene is the core framework which Solar has adapted and extended its features and delivered it as an enterprise platform or an enterprise application which other uh, applications can make use of it. So the reason why we are touch basing Lucene uh, at least in the couple of modules is the most of the terminologies, most of the concepts what Solar uses are derived from Lucene. That's the first reason why we are touch basing and trying to understand about what is Lucene. The second thing is Lucene gives you the core raw flexibility of tampering with the underlying uh, APIs or the underlying mechanics or the components of your solar. So if required, you can go build your own customizer, your own analy uh, customized analyzers, the components, and then you can integrate with your solar as well. So it is always handy to keep the Lucene skills in hand even before we go and get into solar. Okay? So as I mentioned, so Lucene is one of the widely used uh, search storage engine across different projects. So solar is one of the projects which uses Lucene. Apart from solar, there are other projects like Elasticsearch and uh, various numerous products which embed or use Lucene for the search needs what we have discussed. Okay, that's first thing. And second thing, uh, Lucene is a very, very, very highly scalable and performing search library where you can use it for uh, huge applications which is crunching terabytes of data, uh, handling uh, numerous transactions. So don't be under impression that Lucene or Solar is for a moderate or a mid-sized application where you have decent number of uh, search needs or decent transactions. So Lucene can scale to a huge data sets as well. So we'll see all the dynamics of how Lucene uh, can, scale, can be scaled. Uh, difference between Google search and Lucene. So there are few differences. Uh, first of all, we haven't even got into the details of what Lucene is all about. I'll be going through that uh, in a while. Even before that, I'll explain what is a Google search engine. Google search engine is a very, very, very complex uh, product or a complex search engine which does more than what Lucene or Solar does. Say for example, 
Lucene is a search library with a minimal set of uh, search features which is more than sufficient for any traditional large scale application like e-commerce applications. Google or Bing search engines are not like that. Say for example, Google has to go and document, uh, search for all the head web pages or documents on the web, analyze the documents, analyze the content, analyze the volume of interactions with that page, analyze what, what kind of content it is. So it is for an altogether different purpose. It is like a huge meta search engine which does a lot of intelligent uh, ranking or intelligent uh, sorting or intelligent uh, ads, a uh, lot of things uh, internally. The basic idea or the approach between Lucene and the Google search engine is same. Everything has to be indexed and everything has to be searched used on based on the index. The basic idea irrespective of whether it is Google search engine or any product which uses Lucene is the same. But the complexity and the features what Google search engine uses is way way too uh, bigger than compared to Lucene. Okay. Does that help Vintage? Yeah, I think that's a great follow-up question. So Lucene can't search all the web pages in the web. Yes, of course, Lucene can search. So before that, I would like to add a point. So Lucene is not a framework or a library which can go and search web on its own. So Lucene even doesn't know how to go and search all the web on its own. Okay, so Lucene is a pretty simple API which can take a document and index it. And if you give a term, it will search into the document store and retrieves the document and gives it back to you. That's the boundaries of Lucene. If you have to do a web crawling of all the web pages on the web using Lucene, you have to use a third party or another framework which acts like a crawler. Same, say for example, Nutch is a uh, open source crawler which can go get all the web pages on the web and give it to Lucene. Okay, once you give the document to Lucene, then Lucene can take over from there and start indexing. That's the boundary of Lucene. Okay, fine. So as I mentioned, so we will be covering the basics and a lot of detailed concepts of Lucene and it is very good uh, skill to have it in handy even though you are learning solar because solar is built on top of Lucene. And solar is nothing but a very simple uh, web application which uses the Lucene Java APIs. Okay? Great. So first thing, uh, even before I go and explain what is Lucene, so you guys might be uh, really uh, aware of the person who is on to the right side of the slide. Any guesses who is that person, Duck Cutting? And any other frameworks he had created or invented? Great. Absolutely. Thank you guys. Yes, he is the creator of Hadoop, which is a very popular and very uh, famous uh, ups, up, uh, uptaking technology nowadays. So he's the one who has invented Lucene as well. So you guys should be pretty confident about Lucene's robustness and the scale what it can offer to us. Okay, so as I mentioned, Lucene is the simple Java API library which lets you do only two things. Okay, It lets you index the content or the documents and, re and it lets you search. That's it. The primary responsibility or the boundary of Lucene library is only this two high level or abstract boundaries. One is indexing and the other one is searching. 
that's it. Okay, we'll talk about what is indexing, how is it better to uh, databases, all that stuff in a while. Okay, for now, we'll just keep it as Yosin is only used for indexing and searching. So if you guys are really curious about who and all are using Lucene, uh, there is a huge list which you can always go and check it out. Maybe I can also just click on it. Okay, it didn't. So you can always try this link. Uh, very few uh, who is using Lucene. My understanding is it is lot more than LinkedIn and Twitter. The worlds of Yahoo, AOL, uh, Salesforce. My guess is most of the large scale enterprise applications has to be using or they may be using the Lucene project. So it's been already tried, proven technology for a decade so you don't have to worry about its stability and its use. So most of the companies they don't use the plain vanilla flavor of solar at times they may have to augment the Lucene APIs and use their own versions of uh, analyzers, their own versions of APIs to customize any security aspect or uh, custom behavior of their uh, business application. So they might be using both of the both of the technologies in conjunction. Okay. So just to give uh, the scale or the uh, what Lucene uh, can handle. So my guess is I have seen personally working in large scale applications which can be uh, in say something like a few terabytes, uh, my personal experience, it can crunch few terabytes easily and handle uh, millions of millions of transactions with ease. So you should not be worried about uh, the scale aspect of it. Okay. Uh, when it comes to uh, the power and the efficiency of all the algorithms, we will be going through some of them in details, what kind of flexibility or what kind of algorithms Lucene supports in today and tomorrow's sessions. It has very pow some of the very powerful uh, algorithms and features which will be covering it very soon. And you don't have to worry about any commercial licensing or uh, any uh, cost involved in adapting Lucene or Solar because it's 100% open source and purely written in Java as well and you don't have to worry about the interoperability or any machine uh, dependency or lock in with the uh, particular uh, vendor or a technology. So you can always port your applications from any platform to any other platform if you are using Lucene. That's the advantage. Fine. So let's uh, briefly get into the details of what are the key features of Lucene and what Lucene can offer to us. Okay, as I mentioned uh, just uh, briefly in the previous slide, so Lucene is a very very highly scalable API library or a, I would even call it as a platform which can crunch easily terabytes or even up to a petabyte of information on modern, uh, modern uh, high-end servers in maybe uh, half a day to days time. So it can easily crunch uh, large data sets or the most hyped uh, thing, the big data sets even in a very short span of time. That too on a standalone machine. If you use multiple machines, maybe you can do it in few minutes to uh, hour as well. So some of the interesting fact is it is very lightweight. It doesn't require a huge memory data set or a very huge memory heap. So the most smallest footprint may be in few uh, MBs like more, not more than 200, 300 megs. It is more than enough to run your Lucene uh, crunching or your Lucene indexing. 
So it is also um, very very efficient when you are doing blocked indexing or incremental indexing. When I say blocked indexing, we'll be touch basing what is that. So basically um, what a block indexing or incremental indexing does is it accumulates all the updates and it indexes it in periodic intervals rather than updating the index in the immediate uh, trigger or immediate action when the document comes in. So we'll be touch basing all those things. So it offers you the two key aspects, index and searching, which is very scalable, very efficient for large data sets, right? And also it offers you the ranked searching. So when you search for some document or when you search for some term, so there would be say few documents which matches those criteria. So it cannot return all the documents in random order, right? There has to be some intelligent logic. Say if your term matches 100 documents, any guesses how do you return uh, all those 100 document guys? Say for example, if you were searching for um, Apple uh, iPad 2, okay? So there may be a lot of vendors who will be selling Apple iPad 2 with lot of reviews, right? With lot of people buying all those details. How would you return the best results with lot of different price variations? How would you return all the best results? There has to be some order, right? So maybe we will not get into the technical thing. I What I meant was there has to be some attributes which the algorithm has to analyze. Say for example, the best, uh, the lowest priced plus the best reviews and the most bought items should be written on the top results. Yeah, so these are the some of the things which a business application requires to uh, expect and manage all these things in the ranking aspect. So some of these things we will be discussing over the period of time, how to achieve all those things, how to rank the products which is having better reviews, which is having better price, which is having better conversion rate so that customers can go ahead and buy it. Which is having bad, a particular vendor on the site may be selling really poor with bad reviews. We don't want to put all those results on the first initial screen, right? So we would be pushing all those screens or all those results back to the end of the page. So it has to be ordered and all those ordering has to be handled by the searching algorithm or the API. In this case, it is Lucene. So Lucene has to handle all those aspects and Lucene does that with lot of flexibility and with lot of ease. So we'll be covering all those things, how to rank and sort Lucene records while indexing or while querying. We'll see all those things. Will it help for me to learn Hadoop if I uh, learn Solar? Okay, absolutely uh, interesting thought. Uh, my take would be there are, they are two different technologies. First, Hadoop is used for analytical purpose for big data sets or large data sets. Hadoop uses MapReduce concept to analyze the data, that's it. Uh, it analyzes uh, large data sets and it provides you insights into the large data sets period. Solar is nowhere related to analyzing the data uh, and creating relations between those data are giving you insights. Solar is a technology which is used for information retrieval, faster information retrieval. Okay, first differentiator, Solar or Lucene is used to get how fast I can get the information from my storage within sub-second or fraction of milliseconds in real-time applications. Hadoop is not used for that. Hadoop is slow while you retrieve information. It is used for offline oil oil AP application environment. Solar is more of an online 
real time database where you can retrieve information much more faster. So with this basic differentiation you might already got some sense that they are two different things. If you ask me would it help me? I'm not sure uh, whether it would help because they are completely two different uh, set of things where you have to use it for two different purposes. Okay, so what technology Hadoop uses to retrieve data from uh, data node? Okay, so there are again a uh, lot of uh, internal details. I think uh, I'll not go in a lot of details to what technology it uses. I'll maybe I'll just briefly uh, touch base. So Hadoop Hadoop works on something called HDFS. Okay and it has got a bigger architecture where HDFS is used for Hadoop distributed file system where the data files itself is truncated into pieces okay and one file splitting into multiple pieces can reside into different nodes and all the nodes owning the different pieces have to somehow coordinate and get the pieces and construct the file back and give it to the client. Okay, so this is done by using some sort of a coordinator and the coordinator has to engage all the nodes which has those pieces and it has to get all the pieces back. So it has to go and connect to all the nodes and retrieve all the information, the client, right? So there has to be some sort of interaction between a client and a data node which has to go through the networking aspect of retrieving the file or retrieving the information. Since Hadoop is also written on top of Java or JDK, my guess is there has to be something like a thrift framework which handles all the networking interface of file fetching and file interactions between the data node and the client node. When it comes to Solar or Losing, it is completely different. There is no concept of distributed file system. Yes, there is a concept of distributed architecture, but it is completely different. Okay. Okay. So Hadoop is Again, you can think, okay, why not integrate HDFS file system to store all the index or to store all the files for my solar server. Absolutely, you can do that. There is no, no one to stop or nothing to be uh, not recommended kind of a thing. My personal opinion is you may not require that in most of the cases, okay? If required, you can always go ahead and use the HDFS file system to store your index files. But HDFS file system is not recommended or in my view is not efficient or good enough to do real-time reads or real-time scans for real-time searches. That's the only reason why people don't prefer integrating these two technologies. So coming back to our key features list so apart from uh, ranking so there could be a lot of places lot of use cases where you may have to search say for example uh, you may only know a particular uh, portion of a term what you're searching for say for example there is a long product description uh, like uh, say if you are looking for a particular phone which you are not sure which model, which number, model number or what is the exact uh, name of it. All you may know is uh, let's say Micromax something A canvas something like that. Okay, So in those kind of scenarios, in those kind of situations when the user does not know the exact term what they are searching you may have to use some sort of other techniques called wildcards or prefix queries to retrieve the results what the user is expecting, right? 
So these are the some of the powerful uh, techniques what so, uh, solar or leucine offers. Since we are only touch basing about leucine, I'll stick to leucine for now. So leucine offers all the various uh, flavors of querying the information like wildcards or prefix queries or uh, phrase queries or the term queries or the boolean queries or proximity. We'll be covering all of them in detail, okay? So that's, uh, that's some of the things which you may have to use it when you are searching. So apart from um, different query types, you can also search on a particular field, okay? So when I, when I meant you can also search on a particular field is, it's not required that you have to go ahead and search the entire document. So a document can have multiple fields and you can search on those fields and sort on those fields, okay? <coughs> so these kind of features may be helpful. Say for example, you have seen the e-commerce application where you may have to sort it based on the price, based on the brand, uh, based on say some uh, other attribute like say uh, if you're looking for a laptop and you only wanted to sort based on the uh, memory configurations, you can sort all those things. So all those kind of features has to be required and supported. Okay, so it also supports multiple indexes or what we call it as uh, different database instance for our easiness, okay. So the most interesting aspects or the fe uh, features what Lucene offers is, which we'll be covering in detail like faceting, highlighting joins and grouping of the results, okay. So apart from that, there are a lot of other things like it handles a lot of uh, in-memory configurations, it helps you store and process a lot of in-memory uh, data sets and it also gives you a pluggable architecture where you can plug in lot of your components like if say for example if you wanted to plug your own ranking component you can plug in your data uh, you can develop your own ranking model and plug into it okay we'll be seeing some of these things how it works and we'll be working on it so Let's get into the next topic, okay? So let's uh, start uh, exploring what does a search system components look like, okay? So what are the basic uh, components you may have in a search system? So let's, let's start understanding before we get into the details of indexing and searching. So let's say we wanted to search a huge number of data but a uh, huge number of files in a storage okay and if you want to s say look up all the files for a particular phrase or a uh, term okay let's say we have 100 files okay and we are looking for a particular term uh, let me not introduce term so early I'm looking for a particular word okay which can be part of those files Okay, how, how would we go about achieving this? Any guesses? So let's say I have 100 word document files, okay, something like this or text files. I'll say hello, Edureka, hello, Arun, hello, Venkatesh, okay. Hello, Asha. And say there might be uh, documents like this in say some storage, I would say in some folder, okay. And if there are say 10 to 15 files, how would you just go ahead and search for a particular term? When I say I'm looking for Arun and wherever Arun is located, give me all those files. So have you ever Prakash tried if there are say 10 files grepping for say one term, how long it would have taken for you? Maybe a fraction of a second, right? 
searching, uh, grepping on a particular folder, yes. Right? So maybe a fraction of a second for discussion purpose, let's say one second. Let's say I have added 10,000 files and I'm grepping on a particular word on those 10,000 files. Any guesses how long it would take? Definitely not one second for sure. Just make a guess. Maybe it hangs for a, you might have seen a pause for a while, right? Your grep hangs for a while. It doesn't show any status bar or anything that it is it's looking into those many files, so many files left. Right guys? Maybe 30, min, uh, 30 seconds, right? With a decent machine or a very good fast machine. Okay, let me just uh, put some uh, thought to it. The basic knife approach <coughs> is to go and do a sequential scan, right? So it, you have to go do a sequential scan of each and every file, okay? And look for the words in each and every line of the text and if you find that word you m make a note in some data structure that you found your word in that file and move on to the next file right let's assume if your word is at the end of the file and the file has got 10,000 lines so the probability of uh, finding the word if the word is at the end of the file and the file contains 10,000 lines will be the probabilistic time will be, the average probabilistic time will be very higher in those kind of scenarios or in those kind of cases, okay. So this approach is absolutely fine if you have limited or handful of files, okay. You can always use grep for it, nothing wrong in it. The moment you have say 10 million documents or 10 million files, this is not the recommended approach, okay. So a uh, uh, company like Amazon who has like millions of millions of products, I'm not sure what the exact count is, let's make a guess of say 100 million products, okay, maybe too, uh, too much, but just for our discussion, okay, 100 million products. We cannot go and search 100 million product files every time, it would just stop the Amazon forever to come back, okay. So there has to be some new approach that's where the indexing comes into picture to search large amounts of text quickly you must have something called the index okay without indexing you will end up searching all the documents sequentially every time you wanted to search for a term okay so indexing is nothing but it is a process which you can correlate to something like a back of the book, okay. So you might have guys all seen uh, the back of the book where you find all the list of terms or all the list of words where it is mentioned and followed by the pages where you can find or locate those uh, words, right. You guys are all familiar with that technique, right, yes. That's the exact thing what an indexing system does. So instead of going and searching the documents every now and then, it creates all the possible words, all the words, whatever is there. If you have 10 million uh, documents and in those 10 million documents there will be a lot of repeated words, of course, right, there is a boundary to there is a finite set of uh, words you can have, but the combinations or the uh, sorry, uh, the combinations of those words could be infinite, but when it comes to the words individually, they are always finite data set, right? So once you index the finite words, you can always map on which pages it has got. So you have reduced the amount of data what you have to crunch. You guys all agree? It's a very simple thing, right? Let's uh, bring it down the scale for our simple understanding. In English, there are only 26 alphabets, right? 
the moment you extrapolate the combinations, right, it is factorial of the 26 alphabets, right, it is huge. Similarly, if you just split all the words into alphabets and map where and all you can find those alphabets in the words, it is very simple. You have to only handle 26 uh, records and mappings of those 26 records. It Same thing applies on the words as well. Do you guys agree with that? The amount of data what you have to index drastically reduces and you have to look up into a very smaller data set and you can always locate the data or the document. Do you guys think this is a useful or a very uh, better technique compared to scanning all the sequential uh, files, guys, for the larger data sets? Of course. <coughs> yeah. So in case of Lucene as well, it uses a specially designed data structure called inverted index. A inverted index, which we'll be talking in shortly, is nothing but a lookup. Uh, lookup data structure which can locate the document using the term what you are looking for okay so that is the reason why we would need indexing fine so that's the core component or the core system of your any search platform so before we can do indexing okay we have to get or acquire the content so some of you have asked, can Lucene uh, go and do the web crawling on its own? I said no, okay. Lucene does not do anything or Lucene does not handle anything of that sort, okay. So the components, what you see on the blue color, okay. Say analyze document, index document, build query, run query, render results. Only the components which are uh, referred in blue color is part of Lucene, okay. Anything which is not colored as blue like build document, acquire, acquire content or search UI, they are all outside Lucene or any third party component or any other component. So the first thing is you have to acquire content, okay. Say your content could be in a text file, XML file, it could be HTML file, it could be a web page, okay, it could be Excel file, it could be anything, okay. Lucene does not care uh, where you are getting the content from, what type of the content is, okay, how to handle that uh, particular thing. Lucene requires a document, a document for Lucene is stream of text in most of the cases. Lucene and uh, Solar can also handle binary content which we'll touch base later, not now, okay. For simplicity purpose, we'll keep it as Lucene is only bothered about taking stream of text in document forms and analyzing and indexing it, okay. Once it is indexed, it would search and return it back, okay. So it is the application's responsibility to acquire the content and submit in the form of what Lucene can accept, okay. When we say document, is it plain text or something like JSON? Ideally, a document can be of any type. It could be of XML, it could be of uh, JSON, it could be of Word document, it could be of, uh, it could be of anything. Okay, that's the reason uh, I was mentioning Lucene doesn't care what kind of document it is. Okay, you have to use some tool to tell Lucene what kind of document or what kind of content it is and how to handle that. Okay, it could be of any type for that matter. Okay, there are a lot of open source uh, plugins or open source frameworks which handles different types of files and different types of uh, which we'll be covering it in brief as we move forward, okay. So that is the first step. So be very clear, it is your responsibility to build a component to acquire the content and present the content in the way Lucene expects, okay. That's the first step. Once we have acquired the content, 
again it is still not ready to be submitted to the uh, Lucene APIs. It has to be formed in a document. So this is a little bit tricky. So say for example if you wanted to submit the entire file as one field. So you can submit the entire text, uh, text document as one field. If you want to submit the document as number of fields, say for example if your document has employee name, employee designation, um, employee salary, all that stuff, you have to transform it into feeds and that document has to be submitted. Okay, So you have to build a document. So building a document is again in the format of how you can submit it to Lucene is again outside the scope of Lucene APIs. You have to build your own structure and submit it. Okay, So once these two preliminary steps are done, that's where the scope of Lucene starts. So the first step, once your document is ready to be submitted, is the analyzing step. Okay, so Lucene does not directly take your document and dumps it into uh, the storage. Before it can store your document into the storage or into the index, it has to do n number of steps based on which analyzer you have chosen to use. You will be doing series of steps. Okay, it has to cleanse the document in, it has to split the documents into tokens and then it has to do some sort of filtering, series of filters and then give the document for indexing. Okay. So some of the things uh, what in analyzer in real world you can think of is say for example if your word, uh, if your document has a particular word in which you are searching for. Okay, uh, let's pick a document. Let's say um, I have finished working. I have finished working. Okay, see if you are uh, looking for uh, finish and you expect this term to be matched in this document, right? Sometimes you may want to match some of <coughs> some of these things, right? Or uh, if someone is searching for completed or finished or finish, you expect it to match with this uh, documents. So there has to be something called stemming while indexing. You have to stem the documents to retrieve the root base and store all these documents. We will be covering all this theory and lab uh, in today and tomorrow session. So these are all some of the filters which you have, which, which you may have to apply based on your business needs. Okay. Uh, apart from that you may also say in some of the documents there is a misspelled word or a wrong word. You want to correct those things. So there are a lot of so called things which you may have to use it. Okay, so we'll be covering the Porter stem filter uh, to some extent and all synonyms, different types of analyzers, how to use all the different types, not all different types of analyzers, all the popular analyzers we will be covering it in today and tomorrow session. Okay, so that is the first step. So by this time you should be uh, very curious, the most important aspect or the most important step in the indexing pre in or before indexing process is what guys analyzing yeah building document is outside the scope of uh, Lucene it is analyzing analyzing the document is one of the important step requirement for indexing the document without analyzing a document will not be indexed is it clear guys so once the document is analyzed, it will be further given to index the document and then the document will be indexed and stored. Does Lucene require memory or disk space to store documents? Yes, of course it would require a lot of disk space based on how many documents you are storing and 
memory as i mentioned <coughs> you don't have to have lot of uh, <coughs> memory to handle any processing a decent uh, memory up to say 500 megs is more than sufficient for any uh, practical uh, development purpose if you are using lot of caching to store the documents in cache and giving lot of cache for real time processing at that time based on what is your requirements you can configure the cache sizes okay okay so the other side of the story is once the data or the documents are indexed it is ready for serving it to the applications okay what we call it as the search phase of it so in the search phase which is again lucene supports lot of features and lot of robust things so we can correlate it as querying okay search is also correlated as querying most of the time okay so it is the process of going and searching the index getting the documents as per the query or as, or as, per, as per the search request and returning it back in the sorted order okay that is the high level steps what your search or your query has to do okay so <clears throat> there are different ways how you can go ahead and search and lucene uses lot of different models okay before getting into what are the different models lucene uses we will briefly touch base what are those different models available first thing we have a model called pure boolean model where you search for a particular term and if the term is not matched okay then there is no scoring done it just retrieves those documents which is matching with those term and returns those documents back okay so when i said scoring scoring is nothing but uh, ranking or sorting order of your documents okay so this is the most simplest way so in boolean model there is no ranking or scoring done so irrespective of whether your document is matching or not matching it just retrieves and gives you all the documents okay that's it so there is another mod model called vector space model so vector space model is something like when you write a query your query is transformed into a vector uh, dimensional data structure and also the data uh, or the documents whatever you are looking for it transformed into a vectors in a uh, multi dimensional space and they both are overlapped and whatever is intersecting will be returned as your uh, documents with some relevancy or some similarity okay so we will be touch basing what is relevancy and what is similarity similar uh, relevancy and similarities are used for scoring or giving weightages to the document the more the document has weights based on some attributes the document will surface surface up in the sort order or in the sorted list okay so Lucene uses these two models to retrieve the search results and sort and order based on some similarities or based on some relevancy. Is this clear the high level process what process steps what is involved in Lucene and what are the two different models because maybe in your certification question it will it may be asked like what are the two different models Lucene uses. What are the two different model guys Lucene uses? Boolean and vector space model. Is it clear? So the last two components the build query and the render query are uh, returning the results. So it is, is self explanatory and straightforward. So <coughs> when you submit a request okay so a request goes to the API and the API takes the request 
converts it into a query parser okay and the query parser analyzes the syntax and submits it to the query runner and the query runner returns the results back to the render result and then it is eventually written back to the results okay so the first thing you might have heard about is the query parser so we'll be touch basing what is a query parser you, for now you can think of a query parser syntax is something similar to like SQL okay as simple as that so <clears throat> we have seen lot of uh, details about indexing okay so we have <coughs> seen a lot of our applications built on top of databases so the question might be uh, circling around why wouldn't we use database to use all these things just dump all the records into database do a select star from table where this field like ampersand ampersand okay yes it's a very uh, valid uh, thought which could come across to anyone first of all as I mentioned databases are for structured data okay so databases are very efficient for structured data where you know the structure of the data and you have limited cardinality of index which needs to be created on those structured data okay Lucene or Solar is mostly for unstructured data when I say unstructured data so anything could be there in the text file that is was very unstructured it's just a stream of text for databases that may not work databases may have a field like age you have to define age in the age column okay that's the first uh, different the second thing is again databases may end up doing very high-end scans to retrieve the information which is not very efficient okay and also the kind of B3 indexes what databases most of the time use may not be the right choice for most of the huge scale search applications okay Lucene or Solar provides the features of a robust search for a uh, word where you can go and search and databases are for structured data where you are storing specific types like uh, varchars or integers or dates or currencies right so solar is not something which is used for structured data okay they are used to search words in the documents that is the straightforward difference Okay. enterprise grade web search platform built on top of Lucene so we have seen the basic search process we have seen what Lucene is all about and we have seen how does the search indexing work together so getting little bit more in detail okay so just to give the visualization of what the indexing is all about say for example if we have three documents and each document has stream of text okay document one two and three so the inverted index or the index eventually how it would be converted and stored is every term <coughs> okay and the places of the or the document IDs where it is occurring okay and if you notice there would be a small observation what you could make is only the key terms like edureka courses teachers has been extracted and like the common terms like I like has been emitted so this is what the inverted index would look like so little bit further uh, trying to explore the flow of the indexing so the first step in the indexing process is when you have a document so a document is nothing but a record a record or a document is submitted 
and as we have seen in our search process, what was the first step? The analysis is the first step or the analyzer component is the first step which takes a document. So once you build a document after acquiring the com content, you submit it to an analyzer. So this is the pre-step even before the document goes to indexing. So once the document is analyzed, so the document has to be tokenized or a uh, so tokenization is nothing but splitting the characters into uh, splitting the words into terms or single words okay and those tokenized words are submitted into indexing process which is eventually getting stored into inverted index okay so below is the stream of text which gets submitted to the tokenization process if there are two words like Edureka and Hadoop, so you would see Edureka stored as one term vector and Hadoop as the other term vector. So term vector is nothing but a small data structure which acts like a lookup into the index. Okay, so Edureka, where you can find that word. Okay, what is the position of that word? Okay, what is the length of that word in the index? And using this, you can locate the document. Okay, so now since we have seen all the aspects of search, let little bit explore the core architecture of Lucene. Okay, so if you understand by this time you should have realized the core layer of Lucene is indexing okay on top of the index you will have something called analyzer okay where the analyzer handles all the document analysis for either indexing or for search okay so analyzer is a step which has to be used for both indexing as well as for searching okay so once application uses any method to transform the data to construct the document okay a document is submitted to a document handler okay that document handler picks up okay and submits it to a an analyzer okay so the analyzer picks up the document analyzes okay and submits it it to the index writer index writer then stores the document into the index storage so when you have to read the same document the human or the component submits or writes a query submits the query to the query parser or the search component and the query is returned to a index searcher where the index searcher uses the index reader to read the index and returns the top docs or top results okay so don't worry guys I'm introducing too many technical terms so these are the technical terms we will be exploring it in a while okay so that's the reason I'm using too many technical terms like index writer index reader or index searcher top docs all of that stuff okay so index reader and index writer is nothing but which reads and writes which should be self intuitive and index is the storage and top docs is the documents which is returned by the index searcher okay and also you might have uh, heard about the query parser so query parser is nothing but a query object which will be used to analyze the query and submit it to the index searcher so there are there were too many uh, components which we have introduced in this slide so we will be covering all these things 
in uh, in a while so please remember or tag all these words so this is the whole uh, overlay or the outline of the architecture great so we also spoke about inverted indexing let's explore this little bit uh, in detail and we will see what indexing Lucene uses and what are the uh, approaches it uses internally okay Lucene uses two things one is inverted indexing with merge sort okay first of all let's try to understand what is exactly inverted in this indexing so we said inverted indexing also referred to as inverted file is nothing but a very simple data structure which stores mapping of content or words or numbers into a database file okay it is very similar to a back of the book okay so the intent of in using inverted index is to expedite the searches very very fast okay so to speed in the search results we use inverted index okay so the inverted indexing comes with a cost so you have to spend lot of time in creating the index that's when you achieve the inverted index performance or the speed okay so the inverted index if you wanted to just briefly take a look at it how it would look like is something like this okay say let's assume this is not the exact thing but just more or less it will look like this term say if you have only two documents doc two okay say Edureka yes document one it's there course it's there here uh, teachers okay so this is how an inverted index would look like so if you were searching for Edureka it would return the document one if you are searching for teachers it would return document one and two okay again this is sorted order in a lexical graph lexical order if you see edureka course and teachers they are all lexically ordered and this itself is stored in a tree format so that it can traverse and re retrieve the index to locate the information much more faster this is what we call it as inverted indexing okay so the other key aspect I just briefly mentioned if you try to remember we said indexing is achieved at the cost of creating the index or the performance at the creation time okay so there are various ways or the various ways of creating index or updating on index so if you take a table or a database okay say let's say you have an employee table right and if you have few columns like age uh, name department address city okay and let's assume you have hundred thousand records right and each of those record if you wanted to index and if you wanted to create or index on say name field okay any guesses what happens if you have to add a new record if the table is indexed on the name it has to be re-indexed so the entire table has to be re-indexed so imagine every second you are adding hundred records right and your record size grows from say hundred K to hundred million so what would be the performance of your database will it be faster or it would be pretty slow it would be really bad right so indexing is a operation 
and there are various update techniques okay like uh, B trees okay updates or which we call it as merge uh, sort stagnated merge sort and Lucene uses something called stagnated or accumulated merge sort which is very efficient and it helps in avoiding continuous uh, updates and gives better performance okay so let's explore how does this merge sort work so when you have let's say list of documents okay and instead of storing all the documents into one huge lookup table and continuously keep on updating those lookup table so Lucene what it does is it creates segmented in index lookups so this is again second level of uh, categorizing and then mapping those into a group of documents okay so that way instead of updating huge set of segments in one go we create segments or partitions of the lookup itself so the lookup itself is segmented or partitioned now okay so once you have segmented so any newly created documents are created as new segments say for example now here on the light shaded gray box which is coded as 3 will be new segment okay which will be not immediately added to the index and the documents rather it will be added as a local segment so whenever there is new set of documents okay let's say now let's keep stick to our book example okay so instead of going and rewriting the all the pages back again we write the new documents into a blank new paper okay new documents okay so that page or that paper is retained for some amount of time say for some threshold time either it could be volume or either it could be time so any new document say 100 new documents all those terms were written to a new page which we call it as a new segment so when there is a search okay happening during the period where the merge has not happened the read has to locate those terms in the local page which is not yet merged to the global index as well as the global index for the time being okay once the threshold is crossed okay it takes all the pages does a merge sort it's a very straight <coughs> straightforward merge and updates the index so this is the most efficient way of achieving the performance in Lucene okay so by this you would have correlated now it may not be ideal or recommended to use single update operations or single update documents ideally Lucene or Solar they were recommended to use bulk updates and random reads is this clear guys so one of the thumb rule you should be following in your search application is you should be using Lucene or Solar by standard if you have bulk updates okay and any volatile or random reads okay but that aspect has been changed drastically from the recent releases that you may start using solar or lucene for random reads and random updates as well you will see all those aspects is that clear if someone asks you when you should use solar or lucene so random reads in the sense if you have uh, every uh, every fraction of a second you may have a lot of reads happening okay so you can use Lucene or Solar in that case okay but it may not be ideally recommended with the 
previous versions of solar or lucene that you may keep on updating or adding records for every fraction of second okay what is indexing it is uh, storing into a format to optimize for speed and performance to find relevant documents using a search query okay so it is all uh, contextual description as long as you guys understand the indexing it should be pretty straightforward so what is the technique uh, Lucene uses guys maybe this could be one of the certification question okay merge sort great so let's uh, dig into the details of the storage or the storage structures of Lucene okay so Lucene does not have anything like databases where you have to have a schema or you have to have a particular structure kind of a thing Lucene has a very loosely coupled schema definition or the structure okay so Lucene can have, can have any number of documents okay what we call it as records in databases terminology and each document can have n number of fields attached to it okay a field is nothing but it could be any stream of text or characters okay there can be uh, different field types okay and you can store any number of fields in a document solar itself is a no sql database okay solar itself is treated as a no sql database no sql is a type of a database so no sql itself is not a technology no sql is a type of database which can handle large data sets okay since solar can also handle large data sets it is also treated as a no sql database okay fine so we were talking about documents and fields so every document need not have the same set of fields like field 1 field 2 field 3 so document two also should have field one field two field three it's not mandatory the fields can be varying from document to document <coughs> okay <coughs> when we say fields so the field say let's take a document okay let's assume this is a text file which I am storing it as some file name okay so it's not necessary that it should have the same field mapping of what the document you have submitted okay at runtime you could have created lot of fields on your own and you could have transformed or extracted the content and stored it into different fields of that document say last modified file uh, timestamp file created timestamp all of them can be fields which you can store it as part of the document as well as the content of the document and every document can have variable number of fields so it is like a sparse data structure where you can have it or you can leave it for some documents okay so fields are used okay to index and to store the document itself a field can be used either to say I want to only index this field but don't want to store it so what does that mean is you can index this field and omit this field from storing so when you retrieve the document you will not see the field from your response but you can search on that field okay you might say I don't want to index this field but I wanted to store this document it is just vice versa of it you cannot search on that field but you can retrieve that field back if you are searching for some other field and that document has matched that other field and you can retrieve the field one is that clear or it is just a bit confusing guys fine so if you wanted to correlate as I said a document is nothing but a correlation of record okay it is the atomic unit or the 
aggregation of having multiple fields okay so a field can have a name okay in lucene or in solar and field can have a value okay it is a name value pair kind of a data structure okay a field can be of multiple types it can be of binary type it can be of string type it can be of integer types okay we'll explore some of the field types as well as we move forward okay fine so as i mentioned a field may be chosen just to be indexed or not okay you can decide while creating the document and indexing it you can decide whether you wanted to index that document or you don't want to index that document okay so it is your choice also you can decide whether the document uh, whether the field should be stored or not okay similarly you can also decide uh, some of the term vectors optionally whether you wanted to store them or not so some of these are the some of the things which you can control while creating the index on the fields okay when as i mentioned when you don't choose a field to be not indexed you cannot search on that fields but if you have chosen to store you can get those results back or the fields back as part of the document so just to just to give a glimpse of what kind of field classes you might you might be seeing across in our programming so you might see across string fields text fields uh, integer fields and uh, some of the uh, double float kind of fields so the, this is not the extensive list i just briefly referred some of them so that we can get some idea about it that's all okay so in lucene the field itself is a class which offers some of these aspects if you say field dot store and say no or s yes, it will decide whether that field has to be stored or not similarly field dot index and dot if you say analyzed or not analyze it will either an analyze that field before <laughs> indexing or it will omit from index uh, analyzation so similarly if you just say no it won't even index that field okay similarly as we said if you don't want to create a term vector and store them you could just say no okay so some of these things we will be covering when we go and dig into the coding aspects of it okay so the next aspect which we will be covering which we said is most important is the analyzers part of it okay so analyzers are used to analyze the stream of text okay say there could be different ways of analyzing the content let's say you are building an application which has to be rendered in english okay let's say someone someone else is building in say uh, chinese or japanese or some arabic language where the rules of understanding the text could be completely different so there has to be different language analyzer right which if we say lucene is a very powerful uh, it can be used for any application right there has to be different language analyzers let's say i only wanted to analyze stream of text omit all special characters numerics right i don't want to allow anyone to search special characters in my search test box you guys agree there has to be a different analyzer and if say no i wanted to allow people to search on special characters as well then there has to be a different analyzer let's say i don't want people to type bad words and look for bad words say someone wants to just for sake of fun uh, search for abusive words and enter abusive words or 
index the abuse words into the documents, right? It would look bad, say for example, if someone has indexed a abusive word or a text and if someone searches that document and it shows up onto your site, right? So you have to stop all those things. So then you may need a different analyzer. So all of these things we'll be discussing in the analyzers part. So there are different analyzers which you can use for different needs. So there is not one standard rule that you have to use uh, one analyzer based on all the business requirements. No, you can use only, so the question is, is it possible to use all these analyzers at a time, okay? Straightforward technical answer is no, you cannot use all the analyzers at a time. You can use only one analyzer, okay, for um, indexing or for searching. So the other way of looking at is, if you see what an analyzer consists of, an analyzer consists of one tokenizer and multiple filters. If you wanted to use all the features of an analyzer, you have to build a custom analyzer with all different filters what you wanted to use it from different analyzers, then you can make it as one analyzer and use that one. So for your question, straightforward, you cannot use multiple analyzers, but you have to club all the features of an analyze, different analyzers into one and then use that one analyzer. So for your need, if you have to do something like that, then you have to build a custom analyzer. And analyzer, as I mentioned, there are two components which every analyzer uses, okay? One is the tokenizer. Tokenizer is nothing but how it has to split the stream of characters, okay? Say for example, <coughs> white space analyzer simply splits the words based on occurrences of the white spaces, okay? and there are different analyzers, standard analyzer, simple analyzer, which ignores some of the numeric characters and all that stuff which we will be covering. Simple analyzer does not allow numeric characters. Say for example, there is a 2014 year in the stream of text. Simple analyzer ignores or tokenizer ignores that. Okay, where a standard analyzer in the tokenizer, it will allow that. Okay, filters is set of uh, or series of filters which you can use it after tokenization process is done in the analyzer. A lowercase filter would convert all the text into all the tokens into lowercase, okay. Stop filter is something like where you can uh, omit all the to terms or tokens what you don't want, okay. Stemming filter is you can derive the base word out of each token so that you, you can search on alternative root words. There are a lot of algorithms. Porter stem filter is one of the filter algorithm which you can use it for your needs, okay? So what does the analyzer consist of guys? In a nutshell, one tokenizer and series of filters, right? Great. So as we have seen, the tokenization is nothing but the process of splitting the words into tokens, okay? So eventually based on the tokenizer you use, some of the tokens can be omitted and only few tokens can be taken forward to the filtering process, okay? So Lucene includes different tokenizer, a pre-tokenizer and a post-tokenizer. A pre-tokenizer is the one which gets invoked even before a splitting operation is done. Okay, post-tokenizer is after the tokenization has been done. So some examples of pre-tokenization is, say for example, if you have a HTML document, okay, 
So you cannot directly submit a HTML document for tokenization because there is lot of unwanted characters like uh, less than greater than and the uh, HTML tags those are all unwanted information in some cases. So you have to strip all the HTML markups or transform all that HTML tags and only extract the content you can do it as a pre-tokenization step and there are a lot of libraries which will be covering it as well okay post tokenization is say for example stemming stop stopping and normalization or synonym ex expansions we'll cover all of these examples with lab exercises very soon okay So few uh, important aspects which you should remember between index analyzers versus search analyzers. Okay, so as I mentioned, you need to have an analyzer for both indexing as well as for searching. And most of the time it is recommended or it is best that you use the same analyzer what you used while indexing for searching as well okay even though it is not mandatory at times you can change that okay but it is always recommended you use the same analyzer while you use it for indexing as well for the searching okay great so now let's talk about the query types there are different query types okay so the term query is nothing but say if you are looking for a particular word it will only exactly match that word in the index and return all the documents which are matching the exact word okay say for example if you are looking for cat and if you find any index map to a document cat only cat are returned so term queries does not entertain like phrases. A phrase is like, say for example, cat is a term, okay, French fries is a phrase, okay, multiple words we call it as a phrase, okay, dog is a term, okay, say let's say uh, chicken sandwich. What is this guys? Phrase or a term? It is a phrase. When you have to search a term, you have to use a term query. When you are searching for a phrase, you have to use a phrase query. These are the two basic types of queries. Okay. What if I am not sure? Okay. I know French, but I am not sure. Uh, the spelling of French so I can put a star or question mark okay this is called as a wild card query okay fine okay sometimes I always know the uh, starting of things but I don't know how it ends right so I only know FRE I know chicken okay I know CA I know DO okay so these are all the things which can be used as prefix queries okay anything which is matching with this prefix stream of characters will be matched and returned as a prefix okay this is called as prefix query okay so we also have something called fuzzy query Okay, fuzzy querying is nothing but, say for example, uh, say we have something like, we wanted to match nearest term which has to be matched with a particular character with one or two differences. Okay, so we'll be covering all these things, fuzzy query and all, if we see the examples it will be a lot more easier. So Venkatesh Minwal has a query. So if we so 
use CA in term query, it will not pull any results out. No, if you use a term query API and call CA, it will not pull out any queries at all. You have to either use a wild card or a prefix query API and only then you can expect any results back. Okay. So we have seen what is a phrase query. A range query is nothing but say for example you know the dates. Okay. So you wanted to search between two different date ranges. You can use a range query. Okay. And Boolean query is nothing but say for example if you are searching on too many different fields and add and or or conjunctions to construct the query, you can use Boolean query which will be covering it in the lab exercises. <coughs> okay. So meanwhile you also notice by this time, okay, so a document would have set of fields it would be submitted to an analyzer and we have seen heard about index writer once the analyzer finishes off its steps of tokenizing and filtering those details are submitted to an index writer then index writer takes over and writes it to the storage okay fine so let's see some of the important classes okay so <coughs> This is just a glimpse of the classes which we will be explaining it in the um, coding uh, or the lab exercises soon after we finish this. So you will come across the FS directory or directly directory class so which is used to read the index directory okay directory which is containing the index files okay you have to mention that path so it will load all the index into the directory okay object or you can also use a RAM directory instead of storing the index in the file system you can also store the index into the memory but the only problem is it will be volatile once you lose the memory it can not be recreated either you have to flush the memory uh, in directory index into file system or you lose everything as we have seen index writer index writer is nothing but it takes an analyzer output and writes the documents to the index so it has fields like add document or update document or delete or merge kind of operations which can be done so the other key classes which you will come across is the document itself you can create a document and add multiple fields and add to it say RAM directory uh, might be used in case of when there is lot of requirements uh, which has to be maintained in the memory itself so reading from the file systems also may be a little bit slower for some applications okay because the even though if it is indexed reading from the file system or reading from the index is slower compared to the reading from memory so those kind of situations and if you are having good uh, RAM and you wanted to store the entire index in RAM you can always do that okay always RAM is faster right and you will come across yeah so this classes or APIs are directly related to Java but more or less you will find similar implementations in other languages as well okay but in this course whatever we will be covering is will be related to Java okay so you might have uh, noticed that we also would require a field API where we have to define the field name field value whether I wanted to store this field or analyze this field or index this field or not all those aspects right apart from that you may also come across analyzer analyzer is nothing but is a component which tokenizes and which filters the stream of text you can use different predefined analyzers or APS which Lucene provides or you can build one on your own as well okay 
So let's walk through the base code aspect. Okay, so as you could see, you'll have to define the path where you wanted to store the index before creating an index. And you have to create a directory, okay, on the index and then define an analyzer, okay, and then pass that analyzer to the index writer config object and pass the index writer config object to the index writer okay this is little bit wrapping up of things okay and then once your index writer is ready you can create a document add fields and submit the document to the writer this is as simple as what you could see to create the index okay so don't worry guys we'll see more examples and we'll also do a lab which will be very clear okay so the search process or the searching process can be done in multiple ways one is using the api and the other way is using the query parser syntax so the most uh, familiar way of using it is using the query parser so query parser is nothing but similar to your sql syntax where you write a expression or query and submit it to the a query parser and the query parser in conjunction with analyzer understands your query and then submits the query object to the index searcher which retrieves the index documents and returns the results back. So when it comes to the um, key API classes or the classes which you will come across, so you would have noticed index searcher which we have been hearing is a key one again idx is the index directory which you have to say where is your location of the index in the file system okay and then based on the query type you may have to choose term or you may choose phrase uh, phrase query you can use a term vector and create a query type so in our case in we may choose to use a term query or the phrase query whatever it is you will come across these classes and then again as I mentioned analyzers are required for both indexing and searching writing and reading both the times you would require index top docs is nothing but you search the results and accumulates the results into the top docs class okay so this is the high level flow what you would come across so you would have the index directory and construct the index searcher using the directory object and take the analyzer and submit it to the query parser okay once you query you will get the top docs as the result and you can parse the top docs or the result sets and retrieve all the information whatever you want well, what if we want to add new field to existing index document okay great so very important question so every time you use the API add document okay so let me just give this is very important to understand guys let's say I have document one okay or say file one different example let's say I have <coughs> this so let's say I have file 8 okay so I have some text in 2015 is again going to grow by 50% uh, first time I have added file 8 okay I have run indexing code I have run added file 8 again I am running the file 8 with add document API any guesses what happens so I'm very specific guys I'm using the add document API in this case okay checks if any difference okay any more <coughs> segment is created unfortunately that is not what happens okay the flow is whenever you say add document okay blindly it will keep on creating documents it will keep on creating duplicate documents 
file eight, file eight, file eight multiple times. Okay, looks interesting, right? <coughs> but that is what happens. If you run two times, you will see two documents created of file eight. If you run ten times, you will see ten times created with the file eight. Okay, so add document blindly adds the document to the index. It does not search whether there is already a duplicate document or it has to be updated or not. It is the responsibility of the application to use the right API. You should know that this document is already existing and you should say update this document. Then it will go and update the existing document. So there are two different APIs. One is add document, okay? So something like this. So document that add, it will always add to the document. <coughs> okay? <coughs> no, uh, you would not know at the runtime. Okay? So there will be uh, something, say for example, if you have this file 8 and you have run this program already on this file 8, so somehow you should know it is out of the scope of Lucene. Lucene doesn't remember which document has been earlierly indexed. If you use add document, it will straight away go and add one more duplicate file document to it, okay? So for that reason, <coughs> okay, you have to have something called uh, update document, then it goes and updates the, finds that document and updates it, okay? And yes, of course, you can have document IDs as unique IDs and yes, update is like a upset, absolutely right, okay? So, if you make something like unique IDs or keywords and update those documents, then it would restrict from adding all those uh, duplicates, okay? By default, the moment you run add document without using all these things, it would keep on adding the documents, okay? <coughs> so let's see some of the uh, API libraries, what you may have to use in um, building applications. So how many of you are familiar with Maven, guys? Maven is nothing but it is a dependency management framework. So Lucene, if you have to work with Lucene and uh, use some of the features of Lucene, you may have to use lot of other, uh, lot of libraries which Lucene provides. So everything does not come in one jar file. So you may have to use uh, n number of modules, n number of jar files, okay? Manually including all those dependencies might be a nightmare. Instead of that, if you use a XML based configuration dependency management, Maven allows you to handle all these dependency management with one configuration file, okay? So just wanted to show how you can do that and the version what we will be using is 4.10 in all our labs, okay? So it is not mandatory that you have to use Maven. We will be showing how to work with Maven and without Maven as well, okay? So you will have a project object management file where I will be submitting all these loose dependencies and work with this loose dependencies. Okay, okay, so some of the key packages which we will be coming across when we do cover the further topics is like core, common analyzers, query parsers, expers, expressions, grouping, highlighters, so I don't want to go into the details of it. So let's quickly jump on to the small uh, lab so that we can start off with uh, hands-on today. And tomorrow, we'll be doing extensive hands-on with a lot of exercises, okay? Is that all good, guys? So what you will find here is, you will find once the uh, session is over, 
you will find all these uh, lab exercises and the instructions okay so please follow all the instructions for all the uh, labs as mentioned try to play around okay and we will explore more in the upcoming sessions as well let's go and try to see what we have built what we have to do in module 1 lab 1 okay so we have two class files one is this is a standard demo which will be included as part of Lucene so you guys can also try it out these things and one is to index and one is to search okay so as I mentioned I'll touch base the key uh, points okay so let me remove this this is not required in the new versions okay so the first step is you need a directory right you need an analyzer you need a config and you can set some aspects of the index config writer and submit it to the index writer okay So and then we are calling a method called index the docs. Okay. So what index document method does is it fetches the index, what the file it has to index with a writer object reference and starts writing all the files to the index. So these are the same steps what we have seen in the uh, slides as well. Okay. So similarly, if you notice you will also have the search which we have discussed in the uh, slides it is more or less similar it is to go ahead and search so let's quickly jump on to the lab rather than spending first let's take this the more and more we spend tomorrow we have at least 10 to 15 labs so that uh, you guys can Okay. So if you notice, we will be following the exact instructions, what you have to follow the exact instructions and the only bare requirement for us to run these exercises is to have Java, that's it. Okay. So let me just go to the folder, okay, M1 lab work and show you the folder structure. So the documents is the raw input files which I can choose it to index or I can have any other folder to index. Okay. The lib is the list of jar files or the dependencies which I need to run this particular application or program. And this is the jar file which I have extracted from my application. That's as simple as that. Okay. Let me just go ahead and run the indexing for the Lucene source itself. I wanted to search the Lucene documentation so I'm I'm trying to index the Lucene folder itself okay let's go ahead and um, run this so it has started indexing meanwhile if you notice there is an index directory created into the local folder so it is creating all the indexes from the folder path which I have mentioned so the folder path which I have mentioned is here I can explain the syntax of it. So this is the syntax Java class path, the jar file which I have developed and the lib folder of all the jar files to include, package name and the class file which I wanted to run. So here is the index folder path where I want to store the index and here is the input docs folder where I wanted to fetch the input documents okay so I think it is done now so if you notice it has created an index folder with all the internal data files or the internal data structures okay so if you notice now you will see we can go ahead and search the documents and the next step is you can go ahead and search your index by executing the 
command what is documented or calling the search index. Let me just copy this. I don't want to type this entire thing. No, sorry. So this is, say for example, if you are updating the document, so you can use this, okay? Or if you are searching for the document, you have to use this command, okay?